Welcome to Run the Streets. Wow, are we having an amazing time in Maryville, Tennessee. The state of Tennessee, as we all know, is known for its entertainment. There's Dollywood, there's the Grand Ole Opry, and of course there's Nashville, where so many incredible stars have come out of. Many go there to try to make it in the music industry. I mean, it just has so many amazing facets. But did you know that Tennessee also has a dark side? We are here for one reason only, and that is to bring lost souls into the kingdom of God and to share the love of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to win some souls? It was right here on this street that we were walking down about five years ago with a team of so winners, great people that were out spreading the good news. And we were coming up this street in the dark of night. Our team was walking up this road with our candy bags. And I began to yell out, we're from New Harvest Church. I began to yell out, we have a free gift for you. And as we were walking down this street, and it was about the moment that we reached this part of the street that out of the back door of what I found out later was a major crack house in the area ran a beautiful woman named Robin. Today, I have the privilege and the honor of introducing you to Robin because when she ran out of the back door of the crack house that night, she came screaming onto our team on this very road at this very spot. And Robin said, I know who you are. I've been praying for years that God would send someone to help me. You know, God desires to use someone, my friend, just like you. He's looking for not our ability, but instead, God is looking for our availability. And it wasn't that we had a great ability that night. It's that we have a great and almighty and all-powerful God. The Bible says all things are possible with God. So it was our availability to walk down a road in the dark of night. And that's where we met beautiful Robin running and screaming out of the crack house. We did not know that 24 to 48 hours prior, she had an encounter with God in the crack house. And she began to write down scriptures all over the wall of the crack house. And then 40 eight hours later, we met her, Jesus delivered her, and I tell you, does she have a story to tell? Hello, my beautiful and amazing friends. Wow, do I have a special, special lady with me today, and her name is Robin Trantum. And I tell you, I love this beautiful woman. And Robin, I just want to first of all say how proud Jesus is of you and how proud I am of you. And I want to share a little bit before we get into your story about how I met you. Okay. And that night, it was a long, long, dark night, it seemed, and we were actually coming up this road, our team from New Harvest Church, Maryville, and we were screaming out, we have candy bags, we're from the church, we have free gifts. And Robin, it was from this door of this crack house that you ran out screaming onto the road and saying to us, I've been praying for years for someone to come and help me. Tell us what happened that night when you had an encounter with God inside of the crack house. Uh, so I had watched Daystar, he'd come on and it's like the Holy Spirit come on me and told me, he says, well, put this on the wall. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I putting on the wall? What am I putting on the wall? Marty says, open the Bible, he'll show you. So open the Bible and there it was in Matthews. By your words, you will be justified. And you know you will be condemned. So and I'm like, wow, that's a perfect word. He just showed so you me. heard the scripture on TV, Daystar. No, he didn't say the scripture. Okay. He told me to open the Bible. Okay. And uh, so I opened it up, and there was the perfect. And it told me to put, write it on the wall. So I wrote it on the wall. 
And then everybody that came through, I said, you got to read this. So everyone that came into the crack house, you had them read the scripture. Read that scripture, sure did. Hey, we're in the crack house where you were living, Robin. Yes, right. Well, the here. good news is. I don't live here no more. But when you were living here, tell us some things that you did. Well, like I'd put stuff up, like we praise. That's I'd put it on 88.3 with Caleb, and we would praise. And some of us, I had people come, girls come through the door, and they'd start crying and loving, and we'd love on them. And because we knew the way we were living was wrong. Even if you are addicted, you can still pray, and God still hears, yes. and God still answers. Yes, He sure does. And at first, I, I felt like I wasn't worthy. Because I was so far into addiction and doing stuff I should have been doing. And I just felt like dirt. I thought, well, he's not going to answer me. But then I said, I ain't got nothing left. And Robin, how many years have you been free, honey? Three or four. Thank God for that. He showed me some amazing things when I thought he left me. But he never did. I do want you to tell about this church. You have churches all around the crack house. But something supernatural happened at... This church, would you look into the camera and share that, honey? I looked over, something told me to look over and look, and then there's a big cross on the church from a big light, and it had a halo around it. So I walk over to it. I said, is, where's this coming from? And then I knew where it was coming from. And it says, get witnesses, get witnesses. So I go around the neighborhood and get people to come check it out. Okay, now let's just wait. Let's stop right there. So you saw a cross lit up where there's visibly no cross on the top of this church. And then you went around the whole neighborhood to ask everyone if they could see it. Yes, and they sure did. And they said, and then when you walked up to it, it looked like Jesus praying. And it had a halo around it. It was, it was just... It was amazing. And then next thing I knew, I'd been praying, God, please send somebody help us. Okay, say that again, Robin. What did you pray and ask God for? I to send help. That we really needed somebody. God, please send somebody. And then here she comes with the, uh, some other people, and I heard them. And so I come running out there. I said, I know what this is for. And I was crying and all that. So I knew what it was. I remember the moment. It was in the dark of night, so even though you ran out of the back door of the crack house, I couldn't see you because we were on the street a good distance away, but I heard you, and I heard you screaming, and you ran up to us on the road, and you said, I know who you are, and I've been praying that you would come and help me. And that night, Robin, you gave your whole heart and life to Jesus Christ. The thing, yes, I did. And the thing about it was we'd been here, nobody offered coming invite us to go to church or try to help somebody or nothing and I thought I'm just gonna keep praying because he, God's gonna send somebody and then I knew when I seen her coming down the alley God sent her and it was just amazing and it, she was I mean Deborah basically saved my life well Jesus saved my life but he sent her he sent her right down through here to show us that we were still loved that we wasn't scammed to you know or none of that stuff Robin, what would you say? We have so many people listening that are battling addictions. We have women listening that are selling their bodies. Some of them are unwillfully being trapped in traffic, selling their bodies. What kind of advice would you give to a woman and to a man like Marty who was trapped in drug addiction on how they can get free? Start praying. Get on your knees and start praying to, to Jesus because he's coming. He's not left you. He's going to show up just like he did for me, and he'll do it for you because he, he will be there. There's no doubt about it. He was there for me when I thought there was nobody. So all you, get on your knees and start praying because he's coming. Father, thank you so much. Father, thank you for our beautiful friend, Robin. Father, we thank you that she's free. But today, my Father, we also pray for parents and grandparents that are believing God for their sons, their daughters, their children, their grandchildren. We break addictions over them. We take authority over drug addiction, alcoholism, prostitution. For girls and men that are trapped in addiction, that are dealing, that are cooking meth, that are making crack, that are selling girls, that are trafficking young people, both men and women. Father, we pray for safety. We pray for deliverance. And Father, we pray that you will send someone to their sons and daughters, to their grandchildren, just like you sent us to Robin. Father, thank you for setting our daughters, our sons, and our grandchildren free today. 
just like you set Robin free. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, Robin. And I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> this is Tennessee's Outpouring, where Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. I love to say it like this. Go into your world. Go into your neighborhood. Go onto your street. Go into your apartment complex. Go into your school. Go on to your job and share the love of God. And we're going to reach the drug dealer, the drug addict, the prostitute, the meth cooker, the crackhead. We're going to reach people that no four church walls could reach. And we're all a part of it. I'm so thrilled and excited to be right here at one of the greatest churches in the world, New Harvest Church in Morrieville, Tennessee. And I'm with some amazing history makers, world changers, and my dear friends, pastors Jeff and Farrah Coleman. Today we're taking teams out on the streets. We're going to be praying for others, bringing new converts to church. It's going to be an amazing time. But I want you to hear from my dear friends pastors Jeff and Farah, where they came from, where God has brought them today, and the amazing outpouring that they are seeing in their church and in their city. Wow, Miss Deborah, thank you so much. We're so excited. Pastor Farah and I are here. I tell you, we started this church five years ago, Only five, five years ago, from the ground up. Wow. We had about $2,800 worth of everything. Yes. I'm talking about clothes, chairs, <laughs> car. That's all we had. Yes. And in five years, this ministry has grown 68,000%. Wow. Hundreds of souls have been saved. Yes. Thousands of lives have been changed. Right. We've got buses of teams going out today to reach the loss for Jesus. Pastor Farah, what would you say about what God's doing through your church here in Tennessee? I just want to be the person to say that you can, no matter what you've done in your life, what's going on, where you're at in your life, you can come out of it and come you out. can overcome. You are, you are looking at two people who come six out. years ago was sitting in jail from 12 come years on. of IV addiction. Okay. Come on, somebody. <laughs> now, I want us to talk about that. Because a lot of times people see you, Pastor Jeff, they see you, Pastor Farah, you're on the platform, you're with the people, you're preaching God's word, you have it all together. But what kind of background did Jesus set you free from? Well, drugs, drugs, alcohol, you name it, we were doing it. Uh, crime, which is the reason why we were sitting in jail. Uh, a lot of people ask us, uh, how did you how did you come out of drugs? What rehab center did you go to? And we tell them, the we went to the 1129. And some of them will look at you like, what's that? It's 11 months and 29 days in jail, okay? <laughs> and that was your rehab. That was, my, rehab. That, was, that was our rehab. There was no detox going on before so you, you went to jail. Look into that camera. Pray for the people today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just speak over everyone watching. God, we declare right now deliverance, healing, signs, and miracles. Right there on your, in your living room, right there in your home, right there in your car. Pull off the side of the road right now. God wants to touch your life. He wants to shift you today. Receive your healing. Receive your miracle. Receive the touch of the Lord today. Three, two, one, revival. We're so excited to be partnering with New Harvest Church in Maryville, Tennessee, Pastors Jeff and Farrah Coleman. We're doing the motel ministry. And as you can see, there's just room after room after room. And so we split up our team into two parts. We go down, knock on all the doors, and whoever answers, which there are many that come to the door, we then go ahead and give them their gift. We're handing out our beautiful You Matter boxes today. And of course, we're giving them candy bags. You know, it's one thing to say I love you, but actually love is an action word. 
Love is when we show someone that we care. The love of God that's been shed abroad on our hearts by the precious Holy Spirit. We are to spread that love everywhere we go. Yeah. Okay, so y'all ready? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go. Yeah. Calling all men. Hi. We got a free gift for you, baby. Calling all men. Hello, we got a free gift for you. God bless you. Give me, just say, Jesus, Jesus. Forgive, me. forgive me. Come into my heart. Save me. Save me. Amen. 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 What's your name? David. 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 You're a child of God, honey. Amen. Give me a big hug. All right, we love you, David. David. Okay. Can we give you a hug before we leave? Amen. Oh, God bless you, honey. What's your name? Chris. Chris. Everybody, love on Chris. Love on Chris. Can we get a big hug? What's your name? Oh, oh, Sophia. Everyone hug Sophia. Yeah. What's your name, baby? Sophia. These are all the things I like to get in the gift. You know what I'm saying? So, toothbrush, toothpaste, and then she puts a scripture on it. Psalm 37, 4, take delight in the Lord. And he will give you your heart's desire. Amen. 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 And we love you too. We, we love your children. God bless you. We're going to bring a fried chicken today. Woo! Yeah! Fried chicken. Tell us what it meant that we knocked on your door today. Well, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Come on. It really is. Love you too. Father, bless this beautiful family yes, today. Yes. Put your angels around them. Yes, and yes. thank you, Father, that you're watching over them, meeting every need that they have. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. 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 We love you. Amen. Yeah. Pepperoni pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. You take that first step and come be with us tomorrow, and you're going to be surrounded with a whole new family, honey, that's going to help you. Because we're here today because somebody helped us. Yes. yes. So we just knocked on the door um, in this wonderful motel and this family of four came out and they have a young daughter who's almost a teenager, two young babies. The father is just newly sober for less than a year and and we came just to bless them and we're, they're coming to church tomorrow, praise God. But even more so, like they needed help and we just happened to be there at the right time. This was such a divine appointment from God and we thank God for it because their lives are gonna turn around. They're gonna make the first step tomorrow and step into the tent meeting. And it's, it's gonna be such a powerful thing because those babies, they're hungry and they, they need help and we're here to help them and God has their hand on them the Holy Spirit's moving through even the father's heart right now and they the wife is coming later yes. and so we're gonna meet her we're coming back we're gonna meet her a little bit later and and get to know the family a little bit more but praise God because this is such a divine appointment and we're here to help them and they're willing to be helped and make this new step in their journey so thank yeah. you Jesus. I went through some rough patches in my life where things like this would have helped me so much um, I've, I've struggled so much in my life with things and it means more doing things like that for people that have been in experiences like us than you could ever imagine. It shows the love of God and that we can get from where we were to where we want to be and where he wants us to be and it was just amazing. Every need that her daughter has, and every need that her family has. Yes. Make a leader in that prayer, honey. All right, let's, let's renew our faith. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. Come, Come into, into my, my heart. heart. Help me deliver you. I'm going to deliver, deliver you. you. Amen. 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 You're a child of God. This is a child of God. Woo! We love you. So God's doing really big things, and I'm just so thankful. God is doing amazing things out here. We're reaching souls. We're bringing them in. It's time to save them and be kingdom-minded. God is so good. This is so amazing. We're seeing souls coming into the into the kingdom. It's hot out here, but it's hotter for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Take me a big hug, girl. 
Y'all come on, love on Brandy. Love on Brandy. God bless you, Brandy. I'm sweaty. I'm sweaty. I'm looking up as far as a place to live when you want yeah. And health, no matter health. Or health as well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite some time. I can't remember. Oh, when. we love you. Thank Come you guys so much. Give it up for Brandy. The gentleman that we knocked on his door and we started talking to him and he just didn't want anything to do with what we had to say. He said he didn't believe in the Lord and shut the door in our face. But we stood, I said, we need to right now in front of his door Pray that his mind and his heart be open to receive Jesus. Amen. Do it right then so you won't forget it. Yeah. And that's what we did. Amen. Yes. Amen. We pray over every person, Father, that is staying here, living here, visiting here. And Father, we thank you that the angels of God are around them. Yes. That Father, that you are visiting you, them. Father. That they are hungry for you, my Father, and yes. you're coming into the kingdom of God. We thank you. Many will come to church with yes. this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Yeah. And so today, many have been coming to the doors of the hotel rooms. They've been asking for prayer, for life, for everything. And also, many have been giving their heart and life to Jesus Christ. So this is what it's all about. We go into the dark places. We go into the places where the needs are the greatest. And I love to say this. We go many times to those that have been forgotten. I mean, those that people would just walk past or not give much thought to. Those are the areas, those are the motels, those are the places that we go to and we reach out with the love of Jesus Christ. So we have, we got 40 salvation. Woo! John 4 35 Jesus said do not say there are four months and then comes a harvest he said lift up your eyes look on the fields they are white all ready to harvest I don't know what you have been believing God for today but I bring you good news God is on your side God God is on the throne. Jesus is still Lord over every storm. Come on, somebody help me preach. He's still Lord over every trial. He's still Lord over every circumstance that you could ever be faced with. You can sit down if you want to. I'm going to talk about light me up. Everybody say, light me up. Say it again, light me up. You know, we work on the streets, which I love. And uh, the other day, someone said to me, do you have a light? And I looked at them and I said, yes, I do. Because how many of you know, we don't just have a light, we are a light in the midst of darkness. I love where Micah said, rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. And World Harvest, beautiful family, Elkhart, Indiana. I love you today. And all of you watching online, you are a light in the midst middle of darkness. You are the answer to your family coming to know Jesus Christ. And if you have loved ones that are not serving God, I want you to jump up and shout, they're coming into the kingdom. Oh, come on. They might be on a crack pipe. They may be struck out on meth. They may be an alcoholic. They may be bound by addiction, but Jesus Christ will set them free. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set them free. 
I love Isaiah 60, verse 1. I'm so honored to be standing in this place. This is such a holy pulpit, and it's such a holy place. Listen, that guy asked me, he said, do you have a light? I said, yes, I do. <laughs> so he pulled out his drugs, you know, his joint. I'm just being real. And are you ready for me to light him up? And he said, where's the light? I said, honey, I got a different kind of light. Because Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light. Now listen, you can dabble in the new age. You can go get drunk. You can go get high. You can look for fulfillment in relationships. But I bring you good news today. There is nothing. There is no one. There is nobody in all of the world that will be able to fulfill you, to complete you other than the Lord Jesus Christ, our King of kings. Come on, our Lord of lords. Oh, do you love him today? Oh, do you love Jesus today? I'm like Paul. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. Come on, take this whole world, my friend, but give me Jesus because he's all we've ever needed. Okay, so good testimonies here. We did the motel ministry. Amen. We went to two separate motels. We saw God move. Amen. So we went out and so in, and we was kind of like, oh my goodness, are they going to receive? We, they were so happy that we came. We Even the kids yeah. were so welcoming. Yeah. They were so welcoming. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I just want to say we went out with little ones, okay? We yeah. went out with babies and they were so on fire. They were like, let's knock on the door. So they were like encouraging me. But there was one young man that we reached out to. Um, we saw him from afar and my kids were just kind of looking toward that direction. So I ran toward him and um, he was just like, just had such a good spirit about him. His name was Andre, 19 years old, just so eager to receive the Lord. So I did the salvation prayer with him. And after that, he was excited to tell his friends. We actually met his friends um, on the street as well. So he joined them and we just kind of fellowship with them as well. The other team had already reached them. So we were just, I mean, it was just like a time of fellowship. So I just love seeing those young people on the street receiving the Lord and just ready and eager. Okay, Megan, give us that count one more time. So our total count, we have 106. Salvation. Yeah. Yeah. 151 prayers. Yeah. 